Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have the Racer Star 80 Amp ESC. So basically if you're sick of burning your ESCs, go ahead and pick this up and in theory you should be totally fine. However, what I want to do today is we're going to be testing a 4S setup. Uh, later on we're going to be doing a 6S shootout. So I'm waiting for all the ESCs to come in so I can just do it at one go. Uh, this is the reason why I still haven't added the Tico 32 6S and uh, the X Cross 6S shootout and stuff. So those are part of the 6S list and so is this thing. So this is obviously from Racer Star and it's the V2. And their V2 brand or model are usually pretty good ESCs. I still have some V2s that are still working for more than a year now. And um, they're the 30 amp V2s, which are very good. Now, these this is not a Beale Heli 32 ESC. This is just a Beale Heli S ESC rated up to 80 amps and a 6S LiPo. It takes anywhere between 2 to 6S LiPo. And it has a BB2 microcontroller unit clocked at 48 megahertz. So it's pretty fast. It's, it's really fast. Uh, up to D-Shot 600 maximum. Now, uh, this thing is a beast. It's a monster. It's super sized. Let's get an example here. So here's, you know, a typical 35 amp ESC size. Let's just get its width here. It's around, what, 13? 13.8 millimeters in width right now. Here's Tico 32. It's usually, it's bigger than most 35 amp ESCs, but it outperforms every single thing on the market. 17.38 millimeters. All right. And let's take a look at the 80 amp racer star 23.36 so it's it's pretty large it's it's really large and um this thing weighs 21 grams with everything currently so obviously once you cut some of this and they're using thicker gauge wire they're using 14 gauge esc power wires here and um you know the board looks nice and if we remove the actually the sticker check this out you do have some caps but they're pretty big capacitors like compared to other ones so basically one cap on this esc is as big as two caps on this one so they're pretty massive so that's nice to see i mean you should see something of that nature now what's so interesting if you take a look at the heat sink here the heat sink is 2.38 millimeters thick which is two point sorry yeah two point or so yeah between 2.3 and 2.4 uh, millimeter stick. This thing is uh, it's meant to take heat like a beast, hopefully, and uh, we'll see how well this is gonna play out. I don't know what we're gonna see with this guy. So what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna test them on a 4S setup, the usual setup, which is like an Emacs 2306, 2400 KV, Matic F405, and uh, what else do we have? Uh, and just everything else, R regular Eosheen VTX. And seeing how well this performs, we're going to be monitoring the oscilloscope, watching the FP video feed. And I'm very curious to see if it will beat the Tico 32. Now, in theory, it should. Because this thing is beefed up twice as strong as this one. But it's capacitance. I don't know how well the MOSFETs are going to handle. I don't know anything just yet. So I'm very curious to see how well this is going to perform. But in theory, if this one was executed correctly, it should perform as good as a Tico 32. But the thing is, this thing weighs, one weighs 20 grams when, you know, something like this, when you add four of them, you, you total up to around 26 grams on your quadcopter. But you're saying one of these is 20 grams. So this weighs as much as four ESCs right now. It's pretty damn heavy. But um, if it removes your noise and doesn't burn your ESC because your quad just likes to suck a lot of amperage, uh, this might be the one for you. So enough talking, I'm going to prepare everything and let's just get testing. Alright guys, so the results are in and this is the Racer Star 80 Amp V2. Now on the top we have the 
throttle response throttle noise levels so we got 10 percent 25 50 percent 75 percent throttle and 100 percent throttle both of these are exactly the same and on the bottom here we have the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers now this performed pretty good actually but i, I expected better but me saying i expected better doesn't mean it, it's way above average it's it's literally like a tico almost tico 32 status dys aria status it's better than a dys aria i can tell you that however with this esc it's um it's just it's it's pretty damn heavy it's around 20 grams um each esc so it's it's a heavy esc now let's go ahead and start comparing these now first of all as we can tell here the throttle noise looked pretty good actually this is very nice to see here uh, there isn't any voltage spikes, so the, the filtration on board is uh, handling itself very well. And the uh, heat sink, I did feel the heat sink. The heat sink just soaked everything right up. It was very nice. And on the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers, you can see that for yourself. It looks very, very, very good. So let's go ahead and start comparing because just looking at this, it's very difficult for some to understand what's really going on. So let's go ahead and pick up, let's see, let's just pick up the best ESC and we'll work our way down. So here we go. Here's a throttle noise level. This is the Tico 32 here, and this is the Razor Star 80 amp uh, ESC V2. So as you can tell here that the Tico 32 is still by far a winner. It's, it's twice, almost twice as good, but this is by all means still an absolutely beautiful result. And, um... Here's another example. We'll get the DYS Aria, which is the second best ESC at the current moment of time. Um, but I think, yeah, the 80 amp ESC is slightly better than the DYS Aria, but we can't really put it in the same class category and say this is the second best ESC. But if you guys want that, we could totally say that. But if, you know, the size comparison, this is the, the Racer Star is huge. It's like 20 grams. Uh, the DYS Aria is like 8 grams or something. So you see, you, you know, you have to be very careful what you do. Like you can pick up a DYS Aria and put a low ESR capacitor. It'll be just good. Uh, but overall, the ESC is performing beautiful on 4S. Now, I know many of you are going to say, well, do we need a 6S. Well, the 6S is coming up in the shootout. I'm waiting for more ESCs to arrive. They should arrive this week and we should get started on that. But right now, as you can tell, it is, to be honest, the second best ESC, standalone ESC I've ever tested at the current moment of time. And the DYS Aria now becomes the third if you want to count this uh, class of ESCs into this setup here. Now, let's take a look at the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers here. Uh, let's see something. All right, we'll start with the DYS Aria since we have it open here. And we're going to go ahead with the colored version here. So right now on the left here, we have the DYS Aria, and this is the Racer Star 80 amp. And uh, you can tell and you can see that the Racer Star is doing a lot better uh, in the simulator, uh, simulated aggressive flight maneuvers. You can see the, the, the amplitude, the voltage, the red is just very tucked in very tight within, without any like crazy, you know, voltage spikes, something of this nature here. Uh, so the 80 amp is, is totally winning here, very obviously. Uh, not, not saying the DYS Aria is crap, the DYS Aria is still better than most ESCs, but the Racer Star is even better here. So that's very nice to see. So let's put it in with the Tico 32, just to give you also another idea so we can get a great look at this. Uh, here we go. There it is, Tico 32 noise. So as you can tell, the Tico 32 is still beating the Racer Star, even with those fat caps on board. Um, the, the Tico 32 just outdoes every single thing I've ever tested and uh, it just clearly shows that here, which is just very spectacular. Now, let's go ahead and check out 4-in-1 ESCs just to get a perspective because last time I forgot to actually add these in. So, let's start with the Dal RC engine uh, ESC here and uh, let's take a look at the, let's start with the throttle just a little bit because maybe some of you might want to see that. Let's get the colored version here. All right, so this is the throttle for the Dell RC engine. As you can tell, this ESC is a lot better, but it's it one you know Dell RC engine weighs as much as one of these ESCs basically. So yeah, that just puts it in a perspective. The Dell RC engine is still the second best four in one ESC I've ever tested. It might look terrible now, but this is actually pretty decent. I'm <coughs> sorry about that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the noise though. So here's the noise. Do you see the difference? So there is quite a bit of a difference here. Uh, the, the Racer Star is doing actually very, very good, and I don't need to keep saying very good. I should stop finding another word. And here's a Tico 32 4 in 1 ESC also. So here it is, throttle noise right there. 
So it's it's almost you see even the Tico 32 4 one ESC is just almost just as good as this ESC right here, which is just pretty insane really. Uh, I mean look at this. This is just gorgeous. Both of these are very nice. I really like this. And let's go ahead and take a look at the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers here. Uh, there it is. So in the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers, you can see that the racer start is better here. So it, it is better than both of the best 4 in 1 ESCs because it just it just has better filtration. Plus the motor sounded very good on the Racer Star. Really nice. When I first booted it up while I was calibrating the ESCs and just doing my test uh test throttles just to make sure that everything's spinning in the correct direction. That's when I really start to hear the motors uh before I really go into it. And then just you know hearing it on that low RPM as well as the high RPM uh makes a big difference. And also something very important please start to ground your escs i know it's strange i always thought oh it's common ground who gives a shit i mean everything no but there are some weird hiccups that i'm i'm, I'm i i have simulated it again but i still want more data to show you the difference um but yeah grounding your escs is a must really uh it prevents a lot of weird things that could happen that possibly otherwise wouldn't be explained so take that into consideration from now on uh from now on i'll be whenever i can i'm gonna be grounding my escs i used to just cut the wire and just get, just go lazy with it basically but no i'm starting to see some weird things arise when i don't ground the escs now, now i do more often uh, actually i do always now so overall how's this esc it's pretty good on a 4s now on 6s i have no idea how it's going to perform against tico 32 i've done the tico 32 on 6s um Tico 32 on 6S, you should never put it, uh, you should never increase your PWM frequency. That's something uh, interesting, actually. We'll, we'll get into that later on once I, I dig in a little bit deeper there. I don't have much data on it, but that's, I just know for sure. There's there's no way in hell your ESCs are going to run 48 kilohertz on a 6S on a Tico 32. I don't know why. I think it has to do with KV, uh, because some guy commented me who had also a weird jitter or twitch like it's a, it's a pretty it's pretty dramatic twitching uh on 48 kilohertz uh especially when you're using high kv i guess that it's, it's, it's i don't know we just i just need more deep more time to dig into it so all i'm saying now we're going let's go back to the topic razor star 80 amp v2 escs are good escs if you're thinking of buying them for currently for our testing what i tested is a 4s setup 2306 motors 2400 kv uh they're performing beautifully and um yeah it's just they're just huge and they just weigh a lot but uh, if you don't care about that then go ahead and pick them up you have nothing to lose so far and that's gonna conclude it for this video guys i really hope you guys enjoyed it please consider joining my patreon and really support the channel and i will see you next time see you guys take care